Hey guys, it's Ryder here with my Wonder Woman trailer number two, like the story trailer breakdown. Now, just today was dropped, and there's a big Wonder Woman trailer. We really did find out more about the plot, found out more about the villains, and just how beautiful the whole thing looks. You know, up until this point, I think a lot of people have been very mixed on DC. Scratch that. Not a lot of people, everybody, okay? There's not been, you know, one consensus that everybody can come to. You know, you look at something like Man of Steel. You look at something like Batman v Superman, especially Batman v Superman. You look at something like Suicide Squad, especially Suicide Squad. Up until this point, I personally feel like DC's done an all right job. It's not, it hasn't been anything spectacular. I enjoyed Man of Steel. I enjoyed Batman v Superman for the most part. I really loved Suicide Squad. Um, but, you know, for me, I just haven't been fully blown right, by by everything that, you know, DC's trying to throw at us. Now, I've loved Ben Affleck's Batman, especially in Batman v Superman, and I very much loved Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. Now, because of how cool she was in Batman v Superman, I just completely was like, yes, give me Wonder Woman, give me the full movie. Then we got the trailer at Comic-Con. Everyone's mind was blown just looking at the mascara. It looks so just realistic and beautiful and majestic, and it's something that can never have been captured better than on film, you know, looking at something like even animation and in the comics. Uh, but the first trailer, while it was really awesome, it just kind of teased us for what would come later, and of course, that is this trailer. We start off in like modern day, it seems like kind of like BVS era, and she's looking at a picture of her with Steve Trevor in World War One, and she's just kind of remembering, and that's when we first see the, the mascara. So you've got a younger Diana, you've got her kind of just staring off and then gazing at the world, right, at, at the water, and then a plane crashes. And this is, to me, this is one of the best scenes in the whole trailer. Her just jumping off that cliff right into the water. It's so fluid. And I'm going to tell you guys this. It's most likely all CGI and green screen and special effects. Most of that. Um, I'm sure it's all based upon some, you know, actual foundation of real film. But, you know, the point is that's all pretty much made in a computer. And you feel like you've just made a cannonball into, you know, the mascara water. Where, where I don't know exactly what ocean or whatever. I don't really care. It's it just looked gorgeous. Um, and that's kind of when she's like, you know, I've seen all the great stuff. I've seen all the beautiful stuff, the, the majesticness, all this, right? And then she's like, then I, I've also seen the darkness. And that's where it definitely does seem like those German troops invade. These are not Nazis, so that's obviously something to keep in mind. This is World War One era. Uh, so not to kind of confuse this with a type of, you know, Captain America type of story. It's not like that. Um, and it definitely does seem like a high-ranking uh, Amazonian actually does get shot by a bullet. And that's kind of... I don't know if who, who that's supposed to be. I didn't really get a great look at the character. I, it's not Wonder Woman's mother, uh, Hippolyta. It might be another general. I'm not really sure right now. doesn't matter. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But just those first scenes on uh, the mascara is just so great, so beautiful. And that's kind of right where we're like... They, they actually get down to business and they're like, Steve Trevor, what are your plans? And he's like, I'm trying to win the war that will end all wars and that's kind of when we first see you know what's actually going on in, in the real world kind of separated from the mascara so you know you have diana she's come to this she's she's the secretary she's gonna be steve trevor's secretary she has this really badass action scene in like this alleyway where she's deflecting all the bullets with her wrists and it, it, it's so great it's so great you know she's not even wearing the suit and she looks so cool you know some people are like you know gal gadot is not going to be able to do this she's not a you know a strong enough actor to lead a franchise to lead a movie i really don't believe that i think she actually I, she works especially you know maybe she's not the the best actress they could have gotten right she very much looks like you know wonder woman maybe she doesn't have the best acting talents but nonetheless i think you know the way she you know portrays this character seems to really fit in my opinion with the way wonder woman has been in the comics somebody who is very just you know curious and who you know has that voice tone and i very much see gal gadot as wonder woman so uh, i I really do think they've done a great job with that. For all you men or even some women who were kind of just pissed off with the whole idea that this movie is made for feminists and people who, you know, just want to see a woman be at the head of it, it's not like that, right? To me, this is really, it's a big landmark, of course. It's the first big, major, you know, this type of era uh, superhero film that's being led by a woman. And, you know, it's obviously a very powerful icon for girls. And I, I recognize that. But, you know, I think certain people are taking this to a, some of some extremes. Feel free to hate on me in the comments. I really don't care. But what I'm just trying to say is that, you know, 
I think everybody recognizes how important this is, and I think it's so great. But, you know, people, like, want this to be just, you know, fully for women, just, you know, women, 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 women are the best. And, and you know, I, I think that's an important thing that they have to address in some capacity in the movie. But I don't want the whole thing to just be feeling like it's just a made for feminists. And I think that's been a, lo- a big worry for people. I think that's pretty much been the only worry about this movie, aside from it, you know, just not being fully the best thing ever. Um, for people who are just kind of like, you know, not excited for this movie because they think it's all going to just, you know, be feminist stuff, it is definitely not. You know, they do a great job of just making this seem fluid, seem like it's real, and I think that's what's important, and uh, I, I'm very much loving the way that they're handling everything. It, it seems like it's it's working out great. Uh, more intense action sequences, uh, again, with the lasso, these back flips, these side flips, and that's kind of when we first see our big villains. Now, you know, we don't know exactly who our villains are going to be. People want to think it's Ares. It's probably definitely not Ares. I think they want to save that for maybe a second or third movie. Um, but, you know, the, the name Dr. Poison is getting thrown around. Uh, all because it definitely does seem like the plot of this film is that these, you know, German scientists and soldiers and all this, they are trying to make weapons, you know, for World War One weapons, and that are going to, you know, cause a, a big distress across the world. Now, it definitely does seem like because the German soldiers are invading, you know, in some capacity or another, invading the mascara that they're maybe trying to actually obtain some uh, Amazonian or type of Amazon technology for them to then, you know, use against uh, everybody else in World War One. So we're, we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, the Dr. Poison character, like, I don't know if it's Dr. Poison. It definitely does seem like they are alluding to that with the gas mask, the gas, the weird face, um, you know, just evil type of, you know, scientist, uh, more of a period type of scientist and, and villain. And uh, we'll see where this goes. You know, I think it's definitely important you have a female villain, uh, at least a female main villain, even if, you know, the Danny Houston character you know, his the German general, whatever, even if he ends up being the main villain, I still think it's very important, especially in this film, to have a, a strong, powerful, dominant female villain to go up against Wonder Woman. Uh, I really do think that it's going to work out well. You know, it, 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 the tone of it is not dark. They're not trying to make you feel like, you know, you're you're in Gotham and Metropolis with all this death. No, you're you're in the you're you're in way, way back. Right. The, the 30s, the 40s. You know, you you're you're experiencing a bright new you know piece of this DC extended universe and kind of extending the universe even more forward. And that's really great. You know, it's a lot of fun. So, what did you guys think of this trailer? Was it everything you wanted? Did you love the action sequences? Did you love the story? The way the mascara looks? It's just gonna be absolutely beautiful. It's giving me a lot of like a a, a kind of like a baby of Thor and Captain America of sorts, like the movies. I mean, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let me know your thoughts on that. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click your like and subscribe for more Wonder Woman videos, more Justice League, Batman, all of this. I'm actually going to be doing a Flash and Arrow recap after this. Uh, tomorrow, I've got some other big videos coming. Doctor Strange comes out tonight. My review will probably be coming up on Saturday, mainly just because I'm not going to end up seeing the movie until mid-tomorrow. So uh, definitely look out for that. Easter egg videos and credit scene videos. Everything is coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm Ryder, setting off with Infinite Attitude and keep writing, guys. Bye.